Hello there. My name is Bob. I am a CCNA student who learning from my Rash Academy. When my uncle knew that I am learning CCNA, he gifted me a brand new Cisco switch for practicing my skills. But how do I manage that Cisco network switch? Here, what was the question that Bob asked? If you hear the question well, it is how to manage a Cisco device. If you have the same question in your mind, then you are not alone. It is one of the first common question that Cisco engineers can have in their mind while they are doing the CCNA. How to manage a Cisco device? Welcome to the world of Cisco lab. All of our previous video were related to the theoretical part of the Cisco technology. And now we are going to jump into the Cisco lab, the practical session. The future video will be based on the Cisco practical lab that will show you how to set up a Cisco device, how to configure a Cisco device and how to manage a Cisco device. So in this chapter, we are going to talk about how to manage a Cisco device. Welcome to iRush Academy. Welcome to CCNA 203.01 Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions Chapter Number 34 How to Manage a Cisco Device Learn CCNA with iRush Academy I have placed the complete CCNA playlist at the top right corner of the video information bar. In this chapter, we will talk about how to manage a Cisco device. We will talk about the console connection and console port. We will talk about the rollover cable and its usage in network industry. We will discuss about the difference between the command line and GUI interface. And finally, we will discuss about the difference between the telnet and SSH. Now let's talk about how to manage the Cisco device. To manage a Cisco device or any other network device, first of all, we need to get a console connection. What is a console connection? Console connection means having a physical local connection to the console of the device. It means physically we need to connect a cable in between the device and a PC or laptop. And this cable is called console cable and where we are going to plug in this console cable into the switch. We are going to plug in this cable into the console port of the switch. So when we connect this console cable to the console port of the switch and the other side into a laptop, we get the console connection. We get the local access to the switch console. This is the concept of getting a console connection to the device. Now let's talk about the console port. What is a console port? Whether it is a switch, a router or a firewall, there is a unique common port is available at every device that is called console port. Console port is look like an ethernet port. Actually, it is not using for a network connectivity. It is using to get the console connection to the device. That means if we connect a normal network cable into this console port, we are not going to get the network connection. In the same way, if we plug in the console cable into the network port of the device, we are not going to get the console connection. Basically, the console port and network port are different. They are designed into some specific usage so basically saying the console port is used to access the device physically and what is the situation that we need to access the device physically the fact is that when we purchase a brand new network device whether it is switch or router or any other kind of network device that device is empty with no configuration inside it will have some basic default configuration from manufacturer and the end user like you and me we need to configure this device we need to tune this device into a functional device as per our requirement so how to make this device functional the answer is simple we need to configure the device as per our requirement so how to configure this device to do the initial configuration you need to connect your laptop into this device and get a console access then you can configure the initial setup like setting up the host name, providing an IP address, enabling the remote access, etc. So once if you enable the remote access, then you can access this device remotely over the network. Then you don't want to sit in front of the device with a computer or laptop. You can access this device anywhere from the world using your network. So as we said, when we purchase a new Cisco device, it is empty with no configuration. Then as a network engineer, we need to configure this device as per our requirement. And in case of console port, for some devices, the console port is available at backside of the device. 
but for some other devices the console port is available at front side if you see the first picture it is the view from a back side of a router and you can see the console port is available at the back side and in the second picture you can see the console port is available at front side so this is the console port at the first device and this is the console port at the second device the console port is also called local management port because it is helping to manage the device locally and it also called out of band management port why it is called out of band management port because we are not using the network bandwidth to access the device using the console port it is going through the lain console and it is not part of the network bandwidth now in most of the device the console cable indicate in blue color in some old device it is not indicated in any color it can have the same color of the device but in most of the device it showing in blue color if you can see a blue square or blue indicator in a port you can recognize that it is a console port and for some kind of device there are two console port is available one is the normal console port in the form of ethernet port and the second one is a usb console port there you can use a usb console cable instead of the normal console cable now let's talk about the console cable what is a console cable the current picture in the screen is the console cable and in this console cable you can see one side is a serial interface and the other side is a rj45 interface this is also called rollover cable because it is made by rolling over the connection from one side to the other side the pin out at one side is reversed from the other for example for the serial interface if we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 pin and at rj45 we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 pin so this connectivity between the serial interface and rj45 is made by rolling over the cable that means the first cable from the serial interface will go to 8 pin of the rj45 second one will go to 7 third one will go to 6 fourth one will go to 5 fifth one will go to 4 sixth one will go to 3 seventh one will go to 2 and eighth one will go to 1 and this nine will be an extra cable for the serial interface which is not used so this is how the connectivity is made between serial interface and rj45 connector in a rollover cable now let's see how to make a console connection to make a console connection we need some components with us the first component is a cisco device it can be a switch router firewall etc the second component it's a laptop or computer we need this laptop or computer to get the console access in the screen of the laptop then we can use the keyboard to type the command and configure the device and the third one it is a console cable or rollover cable so how we are going to make a console connection in between this laptop and the network device for that we need to use this console cable the one side of the console cable is a serial interface which will go to the laptop side and the other side of the console cable is a rj45 connector it will go to the console port of the network device this is how we make the console connection so when we create the console connection one side of the console cable is a serial interface can you check if your laptop has a serial interface or com port you cannot find one now the com port or serial ports are out of the technology we cannot see those port any more in any new device so in that case what you are going to do because this serial interface need to connect your laptop your laptop or the pc doesn't have a serial interface then how you are going to connect that thing so in that situation you need to use a serial to usb converter serial to usb converter is a special kind of converter its one side is serial interface and the other side is a usb so the usb can directly attach to the laptop and the serial interface can connect to the other serial interface that is coming from the console cable so here you need to notice one because these two cables are serial interface so how they are going to attach together for that you need to make sure one side of the serial connection should be a male connector and the other side should be a female connector then only you can attach these together so when you purchase the usb to serial converter you need to make sure it is just opposite to the console cable serial interface so that you can attach them together and get the connectivity and for this usb to serial adapter 
for some adapter as soon as you attach this device into your laptop your laptop can recognize the device and download its driver but for some kind of devices you need to manually install the driver you need to use the driver cd that is coming along with the converter or you need to check its model number and download it from internet then install the driver once if you install the driver then only this usb to cdl adapter can communicate with your laptop or else it will show as unknown device now if you see the current console cable you can see it is a little bit complicated because first of all you need to have a console cable or rollover cable then you need to have a usb to serial adapter to attach that into the laptop and again you need to install the driver of the usb to serial adapter if you fulfill all of this together then only you can get a console connection to the device but there are some direct usb console cables are available in the market that you can directly attach a device into the usb port of the computer you don't need to take a rollover cable and again you don't want to take a usb to serial adapter instead of that you can directly attach this cable into your laptop so the one side of this cable has a usb connection and the other side is a rj45 connection so it's a direct cable you can directly connect any network device into your laptop without any adapter or driver and this type of usb cable is called usb console cable so when you mention the console cable normally that is a normal console cable coming with one side serial interface and another side rj45 and when you specify specially the usb console cable then that is coming the second cable one side is usb interface other side is rj45 now after you connect the network device into your laptop using the console cable what is next you need to use a terminal program to get the access to the device so what is a terminal program means a terminal program is a program with a text based user interface for interacting with the computer do you know any terminal program and of course windows command prompt is an example for the terminal program in windows machines and in linux there is a terminal program available in mac os there is another terminal program available so basically saying this terminal program is a text based application that helps you to interact with the computer in the form of commands so what are the commonly using terminal program to connect a network device they are one is putty it is a open source program anybody can download it from internet as free with no license required and the second one is terra time this is also in a good application then there is a hyper terminal this was the default terminal program that were coming in the old computers in old operating system then we have the secure crt secure crt is a paid application it's provide lot of features that the other open source application doesn't have but it is costly then we have the item 2 so all of these are commonly used terminal program we can use any terminal program depends on the computer you are using if you are using windows you can use putty terra time secure crt hyper terminal etc and if it is a mac os then you can use the item 2 application and the mac os version of putty also available secure crt is also available as a mac version so depends on your requirement you can use any terminal program to configure your device now i will show you how to connect to a network device using the putty application for that first of all you have to download the putty application and install it in your computer so how to download the putty application into your computer i will show you first of all open the web browser then type putty then you can see the search result of putty and here you can see putty is a free and open source terminal emulator serial console and network file transfer application so this is the putty application this is what we are going to download it now so here the first website you can click on the download putty option so it will open the web page and here you can see the option download putty click on that now you will get the multiple options of the installation file here you can see 64 bit x86 platform 64 bit arm platform then 32 bit x86 platform so depends on the computer you are using you can select the download file so i am going to select the 64 bit x86 one let me click on that thing so you can see it is downloaded here into my computer so let me open it and install it i open the download setup and now it is asking for the installation so let me click on next then here you can see the installation location click next 
if you want to include the default options then you can keep it as it is otherwise you can make the changes according to your requirement now i am going to choose the default options as it is now click on install and now you can see the putty is going to install in your computer you need to wait some more time because it takes some time now the installation is completed and uh, now click on finish now the putty application is installed in your computer next step is connect your cisco device by using a rollover cable into your laptop or the computer then open the putty application so let me open the putty application i open the putty application so this is the putty application here you can see under the session tab you have multiple options are available here you can see the ssh option here you can see the serial option and the other option if you want to access the network device using the ssh option you just need to enter the ip address in this box for example 192.168.1.50 something like that you need to mention the real ip address of the device so it will be using the port number 22 which will be the ssh port and in this way you can access the device from your network but as per our current situation our device is a brand new and there is no configuration at all it is empty we didn't configure any ip address to the device we didn't configure any remote access to the device so this is not possible right now so the only option that i can access my device console is using the serial option so i can select the serial option now you can see the serial line has been changed to com1 because com1 is the default communication port available in the computer so whenever you click on the serial option it will display as com1 and its speed is 9600 here you can see in case if you are using a different com port for example if you have com1 com2 com3 and multiple communication port then you need to use a different communication port than you can mention here for example if you want to use the com5 then you can mention here but make sure that the device is connected to your communication port 5 then only it can communicate because here you are using the communication port 5 now by default i am using the communication port 1 after select the serial interface and communication port 1 just click on open so that it can display you the console port of the cisco device so when you access the console connection of a cisco device using any terminal program this is how exactly it looked like you can see a black screen there you can see lot of information about the device because this is the console connection of the device here you can see all the details and by using your keyboard you can interact with the device if you press enter now you can see you can interact here and you can type the command there and it will go to different different mode and you can configure this device by entering the command so basically by using this terminal program you are making a communication between pc and the device and with the help of pc you are making configuration in the device so this is how you get the console access of the cisco device for the configuration in this chapter we are not going to talk in deep about the configuration part this is just a basic example i am providing in the future videos we will go in more and more deep to understand about the configuration of the device and now we got access to the device console and what is next now let's talk about the cisco device management options there are two options available to manage a cisco device the option number one is command line interface that is called cli and it is using a command based management protocol such as telnet or ssh the second option is graphics user interface or gui and gui is using web based management protocol such as http or https let's talk about the command line protocol the command line protocols are using to manage the device and they are mainly using the telnet and ssh so why we want to use the command line interface to manage a cisco device other than a gui interface because gui is very simple the end user is getting a graphical user interface so that they can easily manage the settings but still why do we need to use the command line because the command line management it is very advanced level the GUI has some limitation to manage the device such as not all the options are visible in the GUI only the basic things you can make but if you want to tune the device or if you want to configure into more advanced level then you need to use the command line interface because using the command line interface you can simply tell the device what you want to do or what the device want to do you can go to each option and sub options and manage them individually but if the same kind of setup if you want to implement in GUI 
then the GUI interface will be very complicated because lot of options and sub options need to implement in GUI which will make the interface more complicated. So if you are very serious about Cisco technology, I recommend you to learn device management using the command line interface. GUI is good but it doesn't provide you all the function. If you want to master in Cisco technology, learn the command line interface. Now let's see what are the difference between Telnet and SSH. Telnet and SSH are two popular command line protocol that we use to control the network devices. So let's see what are the difference between the Telnet and SSH. First of all, Telnet is the original protocol when the internet is launched in 1969. That means we are using Telnet since 1969 along with the internet and we are still using the Telnet. It's an old protocol. And Telnet is available in Windows OS by default, but it is disabled by default. So if you have any Windows operating system, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 11, the Telnet protocol is available as part of the operating system. But by default, it is disabled. So if you want to use the Telnet, you need to first enable the Telnet feature in that operating system. You can go to add remove program in control panel and select add feature, then choose the Telnet then install the Telnet feature. So your computer is ready to use the Telnet protocol. Now Telnet use clear text for communication. So it is not secure at all. So when we use Telnet for the communication between a PC and the network device, all the communication between these two devices are going in the form of clear text format. That means if somebody, an evil person, monitor this communication that is happening in between the PC and the network device, they can understand what are the communication is going on because they can read the clear text, the password, the configuration, everything. So the Telnet is not secure at all. That's why we are using Telnet in the test environment and in the network where the less security is required. We don't use Telnet in production network because it is too risky. Now on the other hand, SSH stands for Secure Socket Shell. It's not like Telnet. It is using secure socket connectivity between the devices. SSH provides strong authentication and encryption option, so they are very secure. So unlike the Telnet, the communication between the PC and the network device is secured when we use SSH. This two-way communication using strong authentication and it is also encrypted. The encryption means it is converting the clear text into a different secure format so that no one can read it from the outside. Only these two devices can understand the communication. So even an evil person, a hacker, try to get the information that is happening in between the PC and the switch. They cannot read it because all the communication is encrypted. It is not visible in clear text. And this communication can be read when we decrypt the communication. And only this PC or the network device can decrypt and understand the communication. So that's why SSH is using in the production network and in the high secure network. So in this chapter, we have discussed about how to manage a Cisco device. We have discussed about the console connection and console port. We have discussed about the rollover cable and their usage in network industry. We also talk about the difference between the command line and GUI interface. And finally, we talk about the difference between the Telnet and SSH. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Enhance your skills using iRush Academy.